hopefully you can see this. Um, here's my 55 gallon barrel um, that I got from a local business. And what I did was I took a piece of string attached to a marker and I just held it with my finger out at the edge here and swung it across a few different times at different sides of the barrel and that will give me my center point right there. So from there I took the same string and I swung a circle uh, seven inches um, of string so I got a 14 inch diameter circle. This is going to be the top of the fire pit. Then I cut a little um, square of cardboard and I went around and just traced it all the way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut here, here, and there and fold down the back edge. And what that will do is give me a row all the way around of veins that will direct any air to make a swirling fire, hopefully. Uh, that's the goal. Um, so this is the secondary burn air that's going to come in and swirl. So to the other side, so this top edge, this was a 14 inch diameter circle. I did the same process on the bottom side. And here's my uh, 16 di inch diameter circle on the bottom. So this is going to be the lower barrel that fits into the upper barrel. And I just made some notes here that the this barrel is 28, 23 inch diameter along the outside and 35 inches long. So half of 35 is 17 and a half inches, but in order so that the inside barrel is an inch and a half down, I went um, three quarters of an inch further to this side. So um, 18 and a quarter inches total from the top edge is what I made this line at. And this is where I'll cut the barrel. Here I'm working on the lower barrel that's going to go inside the upper barrel. So I cut I um, these little one and a one and a half inch squares. Um, I marked. I cut all the way to the perimeter. Well, almost. Um, my angle grinder didn't quite cut all the way to the end there. Um, it was starting to get stuck in the corner. But um, I cut all of those, and you can see I I bent these up. Um, so these are going to be the the fins that will hopefully rotate the, the air and um, I was able to keep this small vent plug in place and I cut away a section here about six inches to, uh, to be able to shrink the barrel down and screw it together and by doing that I was able to cut out the big plug to get it out of the way. Clifford's going to demonstrate how you bend these fins up. Good job, Clifford. Straight up and down. Perfect. Straight up? Yep. And this, uh, this steel barrel, very uh, flexible and bendy. And uh, I'll be able to pull all these fins up a little bit so that when they sit inside that barrel, they kind of are spring-loaded up against the barrel. So it should turn out really nice. And I'm glad that I went with um, using that barrel as the top because it's nice and clean. It doesn't have all these stickers. And, and uh, when I cut the hole on there, it's going to be a more clean look um, than having the fins um, along the top, all the, all the bends and the cuts. All right, so I... Um, shrunk this in I you can see I cut away the whole lip there so there was no overlap with the lip just with the side it's about five and a half up to almost six inches and um, then I I put some um, one inch self-tapping metal screws through 
and um, you can see I put screws facing outward so that there is a somewhat uniform um, gap all around the barrel and I wasn't quite sure what diameter this this inside would turn out to be but it looks like it's uh, it's about 14 inches um, all the way around and it's a little bit out of round right now um, that's kind of expected the way I shrunk the barrel in on itself uh, and that's okay uh, once it fits inside the um, outer barrel um, it won't be visible or anything you can't really tell anyway but uh, just for an inside dimension um, 14 inches I think will be a good um, hole size and you can see I put these spacers um, about in thirds, a top and a bottom, to try to um, even out the gap along the set sides. And there we go. Now you can see the the lower fins line right up, and they push up against the. Uh, barrel and it's all centered and, and this is how it's going to work the air is going to come in and spin now whether or not there's enough airflow and enough fire to really notice the effect or not that's one thing either way the uh, fire should have plenty of airflow uh, from the primary um, the, the whole bottom being open and the, the really um, non-restrictive grate that the wood is going to sit on but I think this turned out really nice um, the only thing I'm a little bit worried about is that if the air is not blowing directly at the flame then uh, maybe it won't achieve the effect that what it's supposed to do with the um, secondary burn um, uh, hopefully this this spiral um, the air will will be turbulent and mix in and and I guess we'll see how it works out Here's just a bottom view of how this all works. So these screws are, are keeping a little bit of a consistent gap around the edge. Um, so that's good. So the airflow is going to go down through, oh, well, up through there, because this is upside down. And it's going to come out through these gaps here. And the way I cut the barrels, there is a um, one inch gap from the top lip and maybe I can show, show that this way uh. yeah you can see there the black is the top of the inner barrel and the the olive color is the inside of the upper barrel so there's a one inch gap all the way around so this is showing kind of what the configuration is going to be when I'm ready to burn uh, I just have a few bricks under there so there's a gap the air will come in under the brick or under the barrel and then this nice uh, grate my buddy made for me with um, um, welding together some rebar and so uh, we'll have to see how that is for height but that can be adjusted by um, just sinking the the legs into the ground a little bit more uh, this seems to be a pretty good height though right there and um, I, I have plans of possibly digging down and setting this in the ground a little bit, but I'll have to leave enough air gap around the outside so the air can get, get underneath it. Um, and then stacking um, some gray um, concrete bricks all the way around so it looks pretty nice. That's my plan eventually. But I might try it out up like this just so that... Uh, well, just because I don't have time to do the rest right now. <laughs> Here it is running. Uh, so you can see I dug a pit down. 
There's three bricks that the uh, barrel sits on so the airflow can get underneath it. Um, I put four rows of bricks here. I, I'm short two of those concrete bricks, so I have some other bricks in place. Uh, but um, my first attempt at lighting this thing off, um, I used chunks of wood that were probably too big and they set in there pretty awkwardly in, in this small space in there. Um, the grate is pretty high. So that kind of petered out and it was just smoldering and making a lot of smoke. So then I started throwing some um, smaller pieces of wood in there and I tried to stuff them into the, the outermost corners as much as I could. And uh, so it's, it's working pretty well right now. It's throwing quite a bit of heat. The flames are consistently a uh, foot and a half or two feet high. And uh, I think what I might try to do is to lower the grate and see how it does. Uh, it should be easier to load wood then. Um, the longer pieces can just stand up vertically in there at that point. Um, but it seems to be working pretty well. There, There's a little bit of smoke, but not too bad. Um, and I think the barrel is getting hot and, and kind of smoking off around the outsides too. But uh, overall, it's it's pretty neat. I, I have some learning to do with uh, with feeding it, but um, I, I don't quite see the swirl effect that I was hoping for. But it, it seems to be working pretty well, and it's nice to have a, a permanent fire pit rather than a little temporary um, uh, portable rusted out one.